this clip, we're going to take a look at some of the different clays that we use to make ceramics. Uh, even though clay is a naturally occurring material and you could potentially use it directly out of the ground, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, uh, we usually use a combination of these materials blended together uh, via a recipe in order to create a clay body with a specific set of properties. Now, sometimes these properties are physical properties in that they give the clay some characteristics, working properties that are uh, specifically designed for a particular kind of ceramic work. Uh, raku clay, for instance, is specifically designed to withstand the thermal shock, uh, rapid expansion and contraction a clay body might go through when you pull it out of the raku kiln, a uh, red hot kiln into the ambient temperature. Um, some other kinds of specific properties might be aesthetic. Uh, some clay bodies are kind of a buff color, uh, some are a darker orangey red color, and some like this porcelain here have a distinctive uh, crisp, clean, white kind of color. So all of those things play into what kind of clay we might want to use for a particular purpose. Now, some clays are specifically designed to be used for throwing on the wheel. They stand up very well to the manipulation uh, that occurs when you compress and pull clay body up on the wheel to create large ceramic vessels. Um, some other kinds of clays are specifically designed for use in hand building when you're not using a wheel, just creating forms by um, adding them, adding pieces together uh, using hand building techniques, coils and slabs and things like that. And then another type of clay uh, is called slip. Slip is a, just a generic term for liquid clay. And some things that you've seen like uh, slip cast figurines especially, things of that nature, or things that you might have seen at the paint your own pottery shops are slip cast, meaning that uh, a liquid clay has been poured into a plaster mold and the clay has developed a wall thickness on the inside of that mold, the excess is poured out and thus you have a hollow form. So those are all different kinds of clays that have specific characteristics for specific techniques. The clay bodies that we use for pottery are generally divided up into two categories based on temperature. The temperature at which the clay body matures in the kiln, the temperature at which it's fired to so that it's as dense and as fused as, as it's going to become. Um, you probably heard these terms before. They're stoneware and earthenware. Um, the stoneware clays are generally high temperature clays. They're fired to roughly cone 10, which is approximately 2400 degrees Fahrenheit and earthenware clays, which are lower temperature clays, which are fired to approximately uh, 1985 degrees, which is around cone 04, cone 06. Now, the pyrometric cone system is another lecture in and of itself, but suffice it to say that different types of clays are formulated to mature at different temperatures, depending on how you're going to fire them and what their intended use is going to be. Uh, for the most part, functional materials, functional pots like mugs and bowls and things like that are generally stoneware clays fired to cone 10, uh, generally in a reduction kiln, which is a gas-fired kiln fired on uh, natural gas or propane.